In this episode, we're going to visit a sacred pinnacle that's guided travelers for hundreds of years. The white man call it Shiprock. The Four Corners is one of my favorite parts of the country, primarily because of the landscapes. Monument Valley along the Utah-Arizona border draws visitors from all over the world, as does Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado. And of course, there's the monument where the four states come together. There are also many other great places out there that you've probably never heard of. And that's what this series is all about. So many people come to the Four Corners that, well, prices are getting a little high. Just a couple of years ago, you could camp on this very famous spot in Monument Valley for just $10 to $20 a night. Then they built a hotel where the room started over $200 a night. And then they took down the campground and put up these sheds, I mean, I mean cabins, and they cost even more. Everyone should go to places like this. And by the way, my Touring the Grand Circle series will help you plan a great trip to up to eight national parks in the four state area. But the crowds, and frankly the high prices, may keep frequent visitors and those on a tight budget away from these places. They're just becoming too expensive. And that's where this video series comes in. It's for those who simply just like to explore and discover. It's for those who don't need room service or three lattes a day, or a dinner jacket made out of anything other than fleece. I'm calling it The Road Less Traveled. I've stayed in many of the small towns in the Four Corners, but it's nice to have a base camp where you can get provisions. And the biggest town in the Four Corners area is Farmington, New Mexico. It has two Walmarts. It's not as well known as Moab, but it also attracts people from around the world because it's close to so many amazing places that the general public is largely unaware of. Aztec National Monument is just down the road. In 40 miles to the southwest is Shiprock. Chaco Canyon has the largest stone structures in North America, and it's just a little further to the southeast. Hovenweep National Monument and Canyon of the Ancients is to the northwest. And the weirdest and potentially most scenic place of all is just 37 miles to the south. It's called Bistai Wilderness. When driving from place to place in the Four Corners, one landmark is hard to miss. Shiprock in northwest New Mexico. It rises over 1,500 feet above the desert floor to a total height of over 7,000 feet. It's visible for 30 to 50 miles in nearly every direction. Unless there's wildfires within a couple hundred miles, as there were in this day. And wildfires in this area are not uncommon. It's been a guidepost for travelers for hundreds of years. It's sacred to the local native people, the Navajo. It's called Si Bit A -E in Navajo, which of course I can't pronounce, but it means rock with wings, or simply winged rock. From an angle that I have yet to find, the rock apparently looks like a large sitting bird. The myth is the bird carried the Navajo here from their ancestral lands way up north to the Four Corners region. Shiprock is also special to geologists because several volcanic dikes radiate away from the main peak for miles. In places, these dikes are nearly 200 feet tall, but they're only a few feet wide. Dikes are formed when fissures open up away from the main lava dome. Over time, lava trapped in the long fissures cools and solidify. And as the rock cools, it shrinks at different rates giving the dike the appearance of a very large stone wall. Geologists call the Shiprock Pinnacle a classic volcanic neck. It and the dikes formed 27 to 30 million years ago, after its last eruption. Quite a bit of the lava failed to make it to the surface. Eventually, it cooled two to 3,000 feet below the surface. So, at the time it was formed, there was another two to 3,000 feet of rock in soil here. Yes, the dikes and even the top of the pinnacle was underground. It was covered by over a thousand feet of rock and dirt. Pretty amazing. Wind, rain, and time eroded it all away. But where did all the material go? Well, not coincidentally, at the time of the last eruption, tectonic forces started pulling the continent apart, near where the Rio Grande flows today. This slowly created a wide basin thousands of feet deep, and they think that much of the soil removed from here help fill in much of the gap which was created there. 
uh, by the way, a GPS data indicates that the rift is still growing apart at a rate of 2.8 millimeters per year. The power of nature is sometimes, well, very easy to forget. But not here. This was buried. Now it's not. Amazing. Shiprock is on Navajo Nation land, and they, not the U.S. government, control access to it. And FYI, rock climbing has not been allowed since a deadly incident in the early 1970s. For now, the dirt road is open to the public. Hopefully, it will remain so. There isn't much to do here, but look and be amazed. Nature created this. In time, revealed it to us. But for me, the most difficult thing to understand is how long did it take for the wind and the occasional rain to remove thousands of feet of rock and dirt over such a wide expanse. It's a bumpy road, but on this dry day, it was quite passable. By the way, I'm driving in a Subaru Forester. There's a little clearing and a little turnaround once you get to the pinnacle. One of the reasons I like coming to places like this is the incredible silence. Your view is unobstructed, at least to the east, for tens of miles. Yet there is not one sound to be heard. It's really uh, something that if you live in a city, you can't even imagine. And one day I hope to do a video called Places with the Sounds of Silence. So there are no facilities here. There's no water. There's not even an outhouse. There's just the long dirt road. How do you get here? Well, it's a little over 40 miles from Farmington, New Mexico. GPS map systems were not accurate when I visited in 2018. But when you get close, you'll be able to figure it out. When you pass a small airstrip to the east of the highway, and it is just an airstrip, there are no buildings, turn right on the paved road. Not the dirt one. Turn right at the paved road. That's Highway 5. A few miles later, turn right before the dike onto the dirt road. If you're a photographer and want a great shot, first you'll need great light, which I didn't have. High, thin clouds made everything look, well, flat. And smoke from wildfires hundreds of miles away also reduced the amount of blue in the sky. By the way, this video was shot at about 8 in the morning. They say you can get great sunset shots west of the Pinnacle from Highway 64. But I've never been there at sunset, so I don't really know. Okay, this wraps up our visit to Shiprock. I hope you found it interesting, as well as informative, even educational. If you've been through this area before, you've likely seen it. And if you plan on coming to this area, I hope this video encourages you to have a closer look. Because it's one of the real gems on the road less traveled.